Hey guys, Chris Fix here. Watch what happens when I try to start my truck. You could hear a click like the starter was about to engage, but now there's no power at all. Not for the radio, dashboard, interior lights. It's almost like someone disconnected the battery completely. This problem is caused by a bad fusible link. So let's go check out where the bad fusible link is located. If we look into the engine compartment, right off the red battery cable, there are three fusible links. If I wiggle these wires around, listen to this. You can hear the battery basically reconnect and the truck primes itself because the key's in the ignition. Usually the engine will start after I mess around with it like this. So let's start her up and I want to show you another problem I'm having. You can see the speedometer needle is jumping around. I'm going to go and wiggle the fusible links and let's see if the speedo stops bouncing around. Yeah, so you saw the needle just drop when I messed with the wires, so that's definitely our problem. Now that you've seen what a bad fusible link could do, let me go show you how to replace them. So what is a fusible link? Real quickly, a fusible link is pretty much just a wire with a really, really thick rubber insulator. Now the idea is, just like any other fuse, when there's too much current going through this wire, the fuse breaks, so pretty much the inside metal burns up. And the reason why this works is because you can see these are skinny wires. This is an 18 gauge and this is a 12 gauge. And look how thick these wires are down here that these fusible links are protecting. These wires are pretty thick and the current's going to go through these thin wires. So if there's too much current or you get a spike or something, these will burn up. But since it has an extra thick rubber insulator on the outside, you won't start a fire. So it works just like any other automotive fuse. The only difference is this is a wire compared to those normal plastic fuses you're used to or the clear glass fuses you're used to. Remember, anytime you work with the electrical system, disconnect the battery terminal first on the negative side. So let's go cut this open and see what it looks like inside. So if we look where our three fusible links attached to our main wire right here, you can see there's a lot of corrosion. The corrosion was causing a bad contact and the fusible link itself actually didn't blow. It's just that the contact in here Maybe it melted a little bit and it got bad so it needs to be replaced. So let's go see how to do that. We'll get in here, we'll cut out all these fusible links. So these three fusible links attach this main wire right here. Okay, now that we got those disconnected, let's go disconnect the other side. So this straight red one back here only had the two 12 gauge fusible links going to it. And then this black and red one up here had three the 212s and this 118. I'm also going to replace the 18 just because we cut it and you might as well replace them all since you're in here. Okay, since the area where my fusible links are located is really tight, it's hard to get good camera angles. It's also hard to work with all the cameras in there. So I'm going to show you right now the proper way to attach a fusible link to a normal wire. So here's our normal wire. It's a black wire. And then here's our fusible link that we're going to be attaching. So whenever you're doing wiring, it's always good to have something to hold your two wires. These things are cheap, it's like five bucks. I'll put a link in the description to where you could get one. It just makes your life a lot easier. So the first step is, you wanna get your fusible link and you wanna get the wire that you're attaching the fusible link to and you want to blend them together. So you're pretty much just pushing it together and then twisting the wires around each other. So after you get your wire and the fusible link attached, they're kind of meshed in together like that, you always want to add some type of crimp when you're doing fusible link jobs. You just need a small crimp, nothing big, and close it up. Now normally the wires wouldn't be this stripped, so you wouldn't have this much space, it'd be a little bit tighter, just because you don't want this much space of exposed wire, but this is just for demonstration purposes. So you want to try to have less stripped wire. Now the wires that the fusible link attached to were thicker than this, so you're going to have to use a heavy duty soldering iron because you want to transfer the heat from the bottom up through. You never melt the solder right onto the copper. You want to hold the heat underneath and heat up the whole metal here and then add the solder to that. Now I'm using lead solder as a lower melting point. It's just easier to use. Remember whenever you're using something with lead in it, make sure you wash your hands after you're done. So we put the heat from the soldering gun at the bottom here and then we add the solder at the top. Now we'll do the same thing to the other side. Okay, while it doesn't look too pretty, it was done properly. A good soldering job will look something like this, but in my case the solder was drawn through the strands and the connection is strong so we're good to go. Just doesn't look that pretty. Next step is to use heat shrink tubing. 
You want to get enough to cover the spot you're trying to heat shrink, plus overlap each side of the wire. And this will make it watertight. So just slide this over, all the way down and across. Slide it up, just like so. Now grab your heat gun. Good, and you're done. Okay, let's go check it out, see what we got. So we're able to join our fusible link to our main wire, and I mean, I'm, I'm really pulling on this hard. This is not coming loose. We used the crimp, we soldered, the soldered melted through the strands of copper, and then we heat shrinked it, and that's the setup. We're gonna do this for all three of our old fusible links. Now I'm not gonna go into detail when I'm replacing the fusible links in my truck. You saw how it's done. I'm just gonna give you a quick overview of what I did. So let's do it. So I had to clean the copper wires of any corrosion with the Dremel since I couldn't cut back these wires because it was so short already. The rest after that was the same. Use a crimp, melt the solder through the wire so that you have a good strong connection, then use heat shrink to make it watertight. One thing I should mention is don't forget to put the heat shrink on your wires before you crimp and solder everything together. Okay, so if we come in here, we can see our fusible links are all set up. They look really good. I'm going to wrap this in black tape in a few minutes. I just want to go start the car, make sure it runs. So we're going to go and put this negative ground right on. Tighten that up so it's snug and it's not going anywhere. Okay, let's go start her up. Beautiful. She's running good. The speedometer isn't bouncing around. There's no weird electrical gremlins. Okay, that's a job well done. Hopefully this video was helpful. If it was, remember to give the video a thumbs up. Also, if you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button.